Hello Year 6 and welcome to today's geography lesson. Last term we learned all about the Amazon rainforest and deforestation. Today we're going to be learning something new. We're going to be learning more about maps and we're going to be learning about six figure grid references. So last year you would have learned four figure grid references. We're going to quickly refresh your memory on how these work before we jump to six figure grid references. But before we do that, here's a quick do now quiz for you. Look at these symbols here. These are all symbols you might find on an ordnance survey map, an OS map. Can you figure out what these symbols represent? Please write down what you think these symbols represent on a piece of paper and you can draw these drawings in a small form next to them. Here are some clues as to what they might represent and what you need to do is match them up. Please pause this video now and draw the symbols and write the words next to them in your books. So hopefully you'll ma have matched them up like this. The P stands for a car park. If you see that P on a map, you know that there's going to be a car park there. The train stands for a steam railway. The telephone, no surprises there, stands for a telephone. This tent stands for a campsite. This stands for a caravan. If you see that on a map, there's a caravan site there. The M with the two pillars stands for museum. This is a symbol for public toilets. The I, the italic I stands for information center. This shows you that there's a castle there. If you're on a walk and you want to see what an old castle looks like, this shows you that you can go fishing there. OK, here are some more examples of symbols you might find on an ordnance survey map. Please pause this video now if you want to have a closer look at these or feel free to come back to look at them later on. OK. Ordnance survey maps. What human and physical features can you spot on this map? So human features are things that are man-made. Physical features are things that are natural. So for example, a hill or a mountain or a lake or a river um, are natural. Most lakes are natural. There's some that are man-made. However, schools, museums, information centers, sports gyms, post offices, these are all man-made. Also, you might be wondering, what are these brown lines with these numbers? What do they represent? These are called contour lines and they show you how high that spot is on the map. So what you do is you find a line and you follow it until you hit the number and that tells you that this line is 310 meters high. Here we see that this line is 250 meters high and this one is 240. So between these two lines, the ground increases in height by 10 meters. So Ordnance Survey is Britain's mapping agency and they show human and physical features of the environment. Contour lines show land height, hills and valleys. So valleys go down and hills go up. Rivers, grassland, forest, marshes and lakes. We can see here rivers and ro ri blue rivers on the map. We can see the trees where we see these green trees. We can see campsites, a mixture of human and physical geography. Man-made features such as canals, bridges, footpaths and buildings and roads. So we here see some main roads here in red, some other roads in yellow. And ordnance survey maps are particularly useful for anyone wishing to navigate on foot, such as long distance walkers. So if you were going for a long hike, you should carry an ordnance survey map with you so that you can see where you're going. Your map is crisscrossed with lots of horizontal and vertical lines. So horizontal lines go from left to right and vertical lines go up and down. This creates lots of squares known as a grid. Using the grid and squares helps to narrow the area to search, making it easier to locate features on the map. Did you know that an ordnance survey map, each square represents the same area, one square kilometre? So each square here represents one square kilometre. Okay, 
let's refresh our memory on how to read a four figure grid reference. Well, we go along the hall first and then up the corridor. So we always start on the bottom line. Let's look at this grid here. How do we get to these numbers? We go to the bottom left corner. The first thing we do is we go down and then we hit the 58. So the first two numbers of this coordinate are 58. And then we go to the Y axis, which is 15. So the second two numbers are 15. So the coordinates for this square are 58, 15. For this square here, we would go to the bottom left corner and go down first. 57 are the first two coordinates and 14 are the second two. So we always do the bottom coordinates on the X axis first and then we do the coordinates on the Y axis. Look at the bottom left hand corner of the grid square. The number on the vertical line is easting and the number on the horizontal line is the northing. Put these numbers together to give you the four figure grid reference for that square. So how did we get these numbers? Again, we go to the bottom left corner. We then go down to the X axis, which gives us 57. And then we go to the Y axis, which gives us 14. OK. As we said, if you can't remember which lines to use first, remember this phrase along the corridor and up the stairs. OK, let's try this together. Write the grid references for Moor Moncton. Moor Moncton is a little town. First thing we need to do is find Moor Moncton. So let's have a look. Scan the map, scan the map. I'm looking for Moor Moncton. Ah, here's Moor Moncton. Moor Moncton is in this grid square. Step number one, we go to the bottom left hand corner, then we go down, 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 and that takes us to 20. And then we go to the left and that takes us to 38. So the reference for more Moncton is 20, 38. Now, can you please complete two, three and four, writing down the grid references for these places. Pause this video now and complete that. OK, once you've done that, write what is found in these grid references, 1832. So the first thing we do is we go along the X axis to 18. There's 18. And then we go up until we hit 32. OK, there's 32. So what do we have in this grid? We have Newton Kime, the town of it, but we also have a river. We have a yellow road and we have a pink road called the A659. So any of those things would have been correct. Please complete the questions two and three and pause this video now. OK, this question says, is this area a good location to visit for playing golf? Use grid references to support your answer. Well, that depends entirely on whether there are any golf courses here. So can you spot any golf courses? Hmm, I can see one here. Tell me if you can spot some more. But the question says use grid references to support your answer. So you have to give the grid references of the golf course. Giving this four figure grid reference, I'd go to the bottom left corner. Then I'd go down first, hitting 22 and 34 on the X axis. So the coordinates for this golf course are 22, 34. Please pause this video now and finish all of these questions so that you can post them on Seesaw later. All right, look at this map of Swansea. Where is tourist information? Now, rem remembering back to what we learned at the beginning, what's the symbol for tourist information? It's the italic I. So there it is. Now, can you please give the grid reference number for tourist information? We would go to the bottom left hand corner of the square, go down to 41, and across to 78, so it's 41, 78. Please, can you complete the remaining questions here? Write them on a piece of paper and post them on Cecil. Pause this video now. OK, we've had this ref refresher on four figure grid references. Now let's move on to six figure grid references. OK. Where is one square from a map? 
sorry, here is one, one square from a map. What do these OS symbols stand for? Pause this video now and have a think about it. This stands for picnic site where you can have a picnic. There'll be benches. This stands for a station, a tube station. And this stands for a church. The four figure grid reference for this square is 77.25. Why? Because you went to the bottom left hand corner of this whole square and then you went down and you hit 77 and you went left and you hit 25. So the grid reference is 77.25. Lines meet at the bottom left. There we go. OK. In order to give something a six figure grid reference, imagine a larger square split into 100 smaller squares. So you have to imagine that 10 lines are drawn horizontally and 10 lines are drawn vertically. OK, these lines will not be there. You have to imagine them or draw them on yourself. Then you have to add the numbers one to 10 between the main lines. So between 77 and 78, you would add increments of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and the same going up. One, two, three. So that's what it would look like on the X axis down here, which you always do first, and on the Y axis up here. OK, to work out the six figure grid reference, first go along the bottom line and calculate the first three figures. Go along the bottom first. So if we were doing the church, we would go 77, 3. And then the church's first three figures are 77, 3, 7, 7, 3. And then Next, work out the last three figures by going up the side of the square, up the, the y-axis. And the last three figures are 25, 3. So, together, the all six figures would be 7, 7, 3, 2, 5, 3. What is the six figure grid reference for the bus station? Well, first of all, we go on the x axis. We know it's seven, seven, and then we go along to this seven here. So together it would be seven, seven, seven. Next, we go up the y axis, and that grid reference would be two, five, because that's what the bottom is. Eight. So together it would be seven, 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 two, five, eight. What is the six figure grid reference for the picnic area? Well, we start off on the x axis. It would be seven, seven, going all the way down to two, and it would be two, five, nine. So together it would be seven, seven, two, two, five, nine. OK, now, now we know how to find six figure grid references. Let's find Arc Franklin on a map. So I've picked an A to Z map, which is the map of London. And I found Arc Franklin, which is here. And I have put on my two figure grid, grid, refer grid references on, on the X and Y axis. And we're going to find the six figure grid reference. So the first thing we do is find out where Arc Franklin is. Well, there's Harvest Road and we know that Arc Franklin is on the corner of Harvest Road. There's Kendall Green and there is Arc Franklin. I've circled it. OK, we always start on the X axis, which is the horizontal one. So what I would do is I would get a ruler and draw a vertical line going up all the way so I can figure out how many imaginary grid squares that is along from 57. Well, it's, I would say, halfway through 
So I would say that the, the x axis grid reference is 557, and here I would say it's 291 because it's just a tiny bit further north than 29. So the six figure grid reference for Art Franklin on this map would be 575291. And there we see, draw my you have to imagine the grid references. That's a five and that's a one. Let's practice this some more on some other maps. OK, this is Penzance in Cornwall. What are the given coordinates? So for A, first of all, we need to find where A is. There's A right in the middle of the C. So let's start by going down. So we go down, 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 down. And there we hit. We know we're 47. We know it's a bit further on than midway, which would be five. So I would say it's four, seven, six. And up here, it's two, nine, bit further, bit halfway, bit further down than halfway. So I would say it's two, nine, two. So the six figure coordinates would be four, seven, six, two, nine, two. OK, let's do B together and maybe it would be helpful to get your ruler out and draw some lines. OK, so I'm going to draw a line here. So for B, I know I want to draw a line going straight down and I can see that this is almost exactly, I would say, halfway between 50 and 51. So I would say that the coordinates here are 5, 0, 5. And then I would draw another line going straight from B going the other way to meet the Y axis. And I would say that that also meet these numbers halfway between 31 and 32. So the coordinates there would be 3, 1, 5. So let's write these in before we forget them. So for A, it was 4, 7, 6, 2, 9, 2. And for B, it was 5, 0, 5, three, one, five. Okay, now it's, if you're doing this on paper, it's really helpful to get a ruler out and draw these lines so that you're not just estimating it. Okay, now let's do C together. So for C, I would get a ruler and a pencil and draw a line first going down all the way down to the x-axis. So that takes us there. We can see that it's more than halfway, so it's close to 44. So the number here would be 43. And I would say that is 43.8. So let's copy that here. And... So uh, it would be four, three, eight, comma, and then what we need to do is draw a line going horizontally here, and that I would say is halfway between 29 and 30. So our coordinates there would be 295. Can you please complete the last coordinate D, which is here? You might not be able to draw lines, but you can estimate it. OK, now we're moving on to some more six figure good references. But now instead of letters, they are names of places. So let's do the first one together. Swanage Pier. First thing we need to do is find it. Where is Swanage Pier? Well, it's a pier, so we know it's got to be near the water on the coast. There's Swanage and there's a pier. OK, so the first thing we want to do is draw a straight line going down from the pier to hit the x-axis. So I would say that that is more than halfway between 90 and 91. 
So I would say, therefore, that the grid reference here is probably 907. And then what I need to do is draw a horizontal line going all the way from the pier to meet the y axis there. And then I know that that number comes very close to 79. So it would be 9, 8, sorry, 7, 8, 9, because it's very close to 7, 9, 9. OK, let's do Acton campsite together. OK, so Acton campsite. First thing we need to do is find Acton campsite. Well, I can see Acton here and I can see there's a campsite there. So I think we've found it. First thing we need to do is get our ruler out and draw a line going straight down to hit the x-axis. And I would say that that six-figure grid reference is 861 because it's very close to 86. And if I imagined drawing my 10 lines there, I think that would probably be around the one or maybe even the two. And then I need to draw my horizontal line from the campsite to meet the y-axis. And I would say that that is not quite halfway. So I would say that that is seven, eight, four. So here we go. I would then write seven, eight, four. And there's my six figure grid reference for Acton campsite. Can you please complete the rest of these six figure coordinates for these places on this map? And if you have time and would like to, you can complete the extension. How many different campsites are there on the map? and write the coordinates for all of them. I hope you've enjoyed this geography lesson year six. Bye.